Picture yourself on a vast airport tarmac in China. Before you stands the C919, a sleek silver jet that seems ready to take on the world. Its engines, sourced from General Electric and Safran, hum with potential. Inside, flight control systems from Honeywell and radar from Rockwell Collins mirror the technology used by top Western jets like the Airbus A320. Every detail, from the fuel systems to the tires, meets international standards. And yet, it remains grounded. Despite being built with globally certified components and designed to fly anywhere, the C919 cannot leave its home country. On paper, it is perfect. In practice, it is trapped, waiting for approvals that are slow, uncertain, and frustratingly out of reach. Here's the burning question. Why is a jet, engineered with some of the most trusted systems in the world, still stuck on the ground? What unseen forces are controlling its fate? This story isn't just about a plane. It's about power, influence, and a global aviation system where who gets permission to fly can change the rules of the game. And it all begins here, on this tarmac, with the C-919 waiting to rewrite the skies. In aviation, a plane isn't allowed to fly commercially just because it's well built. It needs something called a type certificate, essentially a passport for aircraft. Without it, no airline in most countries can operate the plane. Even if the C919 is packed with world-class components and has passed countless internal tests, it remains grounded until one of the top aviation regulators signs off. That's where EASA in Europe and the FAA in the United States come in. These agencies are the gatekeepers of global aviation. Their approval isn't just a formality. It opens the door to international routes, leasing agreements, and partnerships with airlines around the world. Think of it like trying to get into an exclusive club with two bouncers. You might have the right outfit, the perfect invitation, and a luxury car outside. But unless one of the bouncers lets you in, you're staying on the sidewalk. For the C919, this velvet rope moment has proven tricky. The jet meets global standards on paper, but until it clears ESA's review, it cannot compete freely on the world stage. Certification isn't just a technical hurdle. It's the key that unlocks the global aviation market. And right now, that key remains just out of reach. Certification sounds like a purely technical process, but in reality, it's also a tool of influence. Regulatory bodies like ESA and the FAA don't just ensure safety, they also shape who can compete internationally. A plane stuck in certification isn't just grounded, it's effectively excluded from a multi-billion dollar global market. This creates a tension. On one hand, regulators have a duty to protect passengers. Safety checks, system-wide testing, and rigorous reviews are necessary. On the other hand, when certification timelines stretch for years, especially for non-Western aircraft, questions arise. Is this delay about technical safety or about maintaining control over the market? For China, the C-919's delay isn't just frustrating. It's part of a recurring pattern. Whenever Chinese companies try to integrate into Western-led systems, from satellites to aviation, Progress often slows or stops at key moments. The C919 certification struggle highlights how aviation isn't just a business. It's a geopolitical chessboard where technical rules intersect with strategic influence. You know, China knew from the start that building a plane wasn't enough. If the C919 couldn't pass international certification, it would never challenge Airbus or Boeing. So, instead of going it alone, China designed the jet around Western certified components. The engines are Leap 1C models from General Electric and Safran, also used in the Airbus A320 NEO. The flight control system comes from Honeywell, radar from Rockwell Collins, fuel systems from Parker Hannifin, and even the tires are Michelin, all trusted and approved globally. But China didn't stop at hardware. In 2019, it signed the China-EU Bilateral Aviation Safety Agreement, creating a legal framework for mutual certification. By following both the rules of engineering and the rules of law, China gave the C-919 the best possible chance to gain international approval. And yet, the jet still faces years of delay. On paper, it should have flown internationally years ago. The irony is clear. Even when playing by the established rules, China encountered obstacles. This is where the story becomes bigger than one airplane. It's about the barriers that non-Western manufacturers face when trying to compete on a global stage, even when they do everything right. 
For decades, commercial aviation has been dominated by just two players, Airbus and Boeing. Almost every short and medium haul flight you've taken likely used a jet from one of these companies. Their dominance isn't just about airplanes. It's about controlling pricing, supply chains, and airline loyalty. The C919 isn't just another regional jet. It's designed to compete directly with the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737, the workhorses of global air travel. If it succeeds, even partially, it could chip away at one of the most lucrative duopolies in history. Airlines would suddenly have a third option potentially lowering costs, increasing competition, and disrupting a market that has been tightly controlled for decades. Think of it like the world's most exclusive restaurant, run by two master chefs who set the prices and menus. Then a third chef shows up with the same quality ingredients, a kitchen built to code, and innovative recipes. If the restaurant owners let this chef cook, everything changes. Competition rises, prices shift, and the old chefs have to adapt. That's exactly what the C919 represents, a potential shakeup of a global industry that has seen little real competition for decades. Even without international certification, the C919 isn't stranded. China is the second largest aviation market in the world, and by 2042, it's projected to become number one. According to the International Air Transport Association, the country will need over 9,000 new aircraft in the next two decades nearly a quarter of all global demand. That's a market big enough to keep the C919 flying for years, even if Europe and the US remain cautious. Chinese airlines are already placing orders and flying the C919 on commercial routes. Major carriers like China Eastern are gaining real-world experience with the plane, testing its reliability, efficiency, and performance. Meanwhile, countries across Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Vietnam are showing interest in the jet. Some are even negotiating bilateral agreements to recognize China's certification independently of ESA or FAA approval. In other words, the C919 doesn't need Western approval to succeed. It has a home runway large enough to prove itself, and it's slowly carving out a regional market that could redefine aviation in Asia. The delay abroad is inconvenient, but domestically, China has the space and the demand to turn the C919 into a commercial reality. While Europe delays the C919, there's an irony that, honestly, not many folks notice. Airbus is actually more dependent on China than most people realize. Right now, there are over 2,200 Airbus aircraft flying in Chinese skies, which, well, makes up more than half of the country's commercial airline fleet. China is Airbus's largest single market, and the company has gone so far as to build joint ventures, factories, and assembly lines in the country just to keep up with this huge demand. For example, the final assembly line in Tianjin can produce up to six aircraft each month, supporting both domestic and global orders. This, you know, creates a bit of a paradox. Europe may be slowing China's plane from flying abroad, but Airbus itself really relies on Chinese buyers to stay profitable. By stalling the C919, European regulators actually risk encouraging China to favor its own domestic jets over Airbus models. Even a quiet shift in procurement, like giving more orders to Comac and cutting back on Airbus deliveries, could slowly erode Airbus's market share, and all of this could happen without any public conflict. So the C919 delay isn't just about safety checks. It's actually a strategic imbalance. Europe might think it's controlling competition, but by holding back a jet that could really coexist with Airbus and Boeing, it risks pushing China toward independence and, honestly, a much stronger domestic aviation industry. The C919 certification struggle isn't, you know, just an isolated case. History actually shows a pretty clear pattern. Whenever China tries to integrate into Western-led systems, Progress often runs into these unexpected roadblocks. Take space exploration, for example. Back in 2014, China and the European Space Agency had some pretty ambitious joint missions planned, including deep space exploration and even shared astronaut training. European astronauts even went to China to train and learned Mandarin. But by 2023, the ESA pulled out, citing political and financial pressures, which left the partnership incomplete. Another example is satellite navigation. China was initially involved in Europe's Galileo system, investing both funds and technology. 
But, well, U.S. pressure ended up limiting China's role, which forced it to develop its own Beidou satellite system, now fully operational and used by dozens of countries. These examples really show a consistent pattern. Cooperation is possible, but when China's participation could shift power or influence, the doors tend to close quietly. The C-919 fits right into this narrative. Just like those space and satellite projects, it followed the rules, complied with standards, and yet it still faces delays. A familiar roadblock in China's ongoing quest to compete on the global stage. China isn't letting delays stop its aviation ambitions. The response is, well, strategic and methodical, focused on reducing reliance on foreign technology and expanding influence. First, China is developing domestic engines, like the CJ100A, to eventually replace the Leap 1C engines from General Electric and Safran. Once complete, the C919 could fly without depending on foreign propulsion systems or Western certification. Second, China leverages its massive domestic market. By prioritizing COMIC orders over Airbus purchases, Beijing can reward local production and gradually shift airline demand toward its own aircraft. This quiet market influence doesn't need public announcements. It's simply a matter of economic leverage. Third, China is expanding partnerships beyond the West. Through initiatives like the Belt and Road Initiative, the country is forming aviation cooperation agreements with Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and other nations. Some of these countries are willing to recognize Chinese certification independently, creating a parallel aviation ecosystem. Finally, China is playing the long game, improving the C919's safety, reliability, and efficiency over time. Like its approach with Huawei chips and Beidou satellites, persistence and performance are the tools to gain global trust, even if the Western gatekeepers remain cautious. The C919 isn't just challenging Airbus and Boeing. It's helping China build a parallel aviation ecosystem. By establishing certification standards recognized in countries across Asia, Africa, and parts of the Middle East, China is creating a network where jets don't need ESA or FAA approval to operate. This isn't speculation. Several Southeast Asian nations are already negotiating bilateral agreements to accept Chinese certification for commercial flights. Over time, this could reshape global aviation. Airlines in emerging markets may no longer rely solely on Western regulators or aircraft. Instead, they could operate a mix of Chinese certified jets, providing more options, lower costs, and regional independence. In effect, China is creating a new layer of aviation infrastructure, one that operates alongside, and eventually competes with, traditional Western-controlled systems. The C919 delay may slow its immediate international expansion, but it is also accelerating the creation of this alternative ecosystem. By strategically pairing aircraft development with global partnerships, China is positioning itself to shift the balance of power in aviation without directly confronting Western regulators. The C919 story is more than a single plane. It's a glimpse into the future of global aviation, markets, and geopolitics. If China continues developing its domestic aircraft and parallel certification networks, the industry could fragment. Airlines may choose between Western certified jets and Chinese certified jets, creating competition that didn't exist before. Supply chains could shift too. Airbus and Boeing rely heavily on components, assembly, and sales tied to China. A gradual pivot toward domestic Chinese aircraft could reduce Western influence while boosting COMAC's global role. This isn't just economics, it's geopolitical leverage. Countries and airlines that adopt Chinese certified jets become part of a system independent of traditional Western control. In the long term, aviation may no longer be dominated by two players. Instead, a triangular global market could emerge, with China as a key competitor. The skies, once tightly controlled by Airbus and Boeing, could become more diverse, competitive, and politically charged. The C919 delay, while frustrating now, may actually accelerate this shift in power, showing that aviation is not just about planes, it's about who sets the rules. The C919 is more than a commercial jet. It's a statement of intent. It represents China's determination to compete on the global stage, challenge entrenched duopolies, and create its own rules when existing ones are stacked against it. Each flight in Chinese skies, each order in Southeast Asia, and each technological improvement brings it closer to reshaping the aviation landscape. 
The delay by ESA highlights the tension between safety, control, and market power, but it also shows the resilience and long-term strategy of Chinese aviation. History proves that when China faces roadblocks, it doesn't give up, it adapts, builds alternatives, and emerges stronger. If you found this deep dive into the C919 insightful, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you won't miss our next exploration into global strategy, innovation, and power dynamics. The story of the skies is far from over and the C919 is just the beginning.